and welcome to another episode of It's News to Me. I'm your host, Anastasia Gilardi. And I'm Ryan Molina. Today we will be highlighting the important news and events happening worldwide, nationwide, and right here in our community. As the football season dwindles away, the Atlanta Falcons have claimed the NFC Championship, while the New England Patriots have claimed the AFC. The Falcons are headed to their second Super Bowl, while the Patriots head to their ninth. The 51st Super Bowl will be held in Houston, where Matt Ryan and the Falcons' top-ranked offense will take on Tom Brady and his top-ranked defense. While many predicted the rise of the Patriots in their Super Bowl appearance this year, the Falcons were reasonably underestimated. Atlanta enters the big stage with a record of 11-5, while the New England Patriots stand with a solid 14-2 ratio. Based on rankings and history, New England is expected to have the upper hand this year, with a number one ranked defense and a number three ranked offense. The Falcons, however, see a bit more disadvantage because while they're ranked number one offense in the league, their defensive ranking falls much lower at number 27. Analysts are saying that the incredible balance present with the Patriots will definitely contribute to how the game pans out. The game takes place on Sunday, February 5th, kickoff at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. The Carpentersville Police Department will be the first law enforcement agency in Illinois to join the Pink Patch Project. The Pink Patch Project is an effort between Los Angeles County Police Chiefs Association and other public safety agencies that take initiative to raise awareness about breast cancer as well as raising funds for cancer research. About 90 agencies nationwide are participating in this movement and in 2016, the agencies raised about $320,000 that are being distributed to various foundations that support breast cancer research. Research. All of the officers can be seen wearing a bright pink police uniform patch on their everyday uniforms to show the true meaning behind it and stimulate conversations when interacting within the community. By March of 2017, the Carpentersville Police Department is in the process of contacting the Chicagoland Breast Cancer Research and Support Foundations to hopefully establish partnership in the movement. According to the department, as soon as they have chosen a foundation, the Carpentersville Police Department will be selling the pink patches for $10 each. More information regarding the sales of the pink patches will be released when final details are made. Renowned actress Mary Tyler Moore, best known for her roles in the Mary Tyler Moore show and 1980 film Ordinary People, died on Wednesday, January 25th in Connecticut at the age of 80. Moore was also known for her role as the wife on the Dick Van Dyke show, which launched her career back in the 1960s. Reports say that she passed surrounded by family and friends, and the cause of death was cardiopulmonary arrest due to pneumonia. Throughout her career, she earned six Emmys and one Oscar nomination. Now let's hear from Katie Drum with the Park Bench. Hi there, I'm Katie Drum, Marketing and Sponsorship Coordinator at the Batavia Park District, and welcome to the Park Bench. I am bringing you Park District news today from the East Side Community Center, home to many special events, Shannon Hall and our New Horizons Preschool. Uh, speaking of New Horizons Preschool, if you're considering enrolling your little one in our progressive school, uh, we will be hosting an open house on Tuesday, January 24th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Uh, parents and children are welcome to come visit our classrooms and meet all of our amazing teachers. Uh, for more information, you can visit bataviaparks.org or you can always also contact the coordinator, Laura, uh, Lori McDonald, at 630-406-5282, and you can schedule your own private tour. Also, the cold weather is finally here, but it does go up and down, as you guys all know. And uh, we do want to remind the community about rules for skating at Depot Pond. Uh, the temperature must be below zero for several days for the ice to become thick enough for safe skating. And eight inches or greater um, of ice is required before the pond is cleared for skating. Uh, so please stay off the thin or slushy ice or freshly sprayed uh, snow and ice. Snow, rain, and warm weather spells like today uh, may destroy many hours of work and make ice difficult for skating. So when the red flag is flown, uh, skating is prohibited. Uh, the Peg Bond Center will also be open as an unsupervised warming house, weather permitting. Doors open at 8 a.m. and are locked at 5 p.m. Only the foyer and the washrooms are available, um, but the Park District is also not responsible for any lost or stolen items. Uh, the Peg Bond Center will also be closed for rental use through February 20, uh, 20th. And safety is of the most importance when it comes to using Depot Pond uh, for ice skating, so don't forget to check the flag or you can always contact us at 630-879-5235 to see if the pond is open for use. 
And Valentine's season is coming up and it's a great time to take your daughter ages three through 12 on a special date. Join us for our popular daddy-daughter date night on Friday, February 3rd from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Rotolo Middle School. You can enjoy an evening of entertainment, dessert, dancing, games, photographs, and a fun carnival theme this year. The price is $30 per couple, one dad and one daughter, and it's $15 per additional daughter. And new this year, uh, you can treat your daughter to a pink or white corsage, uh, courtesy of Town and Country Gardens. Uh, corsages are just $15 each. Um, for more details on how to register, you can also give us a call at our main office number. Um, there are also many wonderful local organizations committed to making the Tri-Cities a great place to live, to work, and to play. Uh, many of, uh, of them could not operate without the help of people like you. Uh, volunteers are a vital part of any success of all organizations, and they truly make a difference in the community. Um, so please stop by our Community Resource Expo on Saturday, February 4th from 10 a.m. to noon. Um, and you can learn about opportunities available for donating your time, your expertise, or resources. Uh, whether you're interested in animals, education, or the arts, uh, there's definitely be, uh, an organization that will match your passion. And also, if there's a wedding in your future, or perhaps you got engaged this holiday season, uh, save the date for our second annual bridal showcase on Saturday, February 25th. You can visit bataviaparks.org for more details. Um, and also be sure to check out our winter fun guide for a lot of great special events and programs that we have scheduled for the whole year. Uh, it's a new year and it's uh, never too late to learn something new or start a new project. So uh, other than that, we'll see you next time on the Park Bench. In BHS News, Batavia High School Student Council will be holding a mid-year dance event called the B-Town Get Down on Saturday, February 11th from 7.30 until 10.30 p.m. for BHS students. The night will include black lights, dancing, and will be DJed by senior Max Carlson. This will be a casual event, so students are encouraged to dress in t-shirts, jeans, shorts, and lots of neon. No dresses, tuxes, dates, or dinner plans necessary. Tickets can be purchased on the Student Council website and will be sold during lunches in the near future. To get to the Student Council website, go to bhs.bps101.net and follow the link there. Each ticket online is $12 or $15 at the door. On Tuesday, January 24th, President Donald Trump signed an executive action in order to advance the approval of the Keystone XL and the Dakota Access oil pipelines. In the first aside from former President Barack Obama's administration to block the construction, Trump is making moves on one of his campaign promises. While signing documents in the Oval Office Tuesday, Trump declared to renegotiate some of the terms of the Keystone bill and would seek to get that pipeline built. Also, Trump issued executive actions in declaring that oil pipelines pipelines constructed in the U.S. should be built with U.S. materials, which will streamline the regulatory process and shorten the environmental review process. Activists have spent months arguing that the project poses a threat to water resources and sacred Native American sites and protesting against plans to route the pipeline beneath a lake near a North Dakota Indian reservation. The pipeline is to carry North Dakota oil through South Dakota and Iowa to a shipping point in Illinois. Energy transfer partners the company that wants to build the pipeline declared that it would be safe. Now here's Check It Out with Michelle Martzell. Hello, I'm Michelle Martzell, Promotional Services Manager here at Batavia Public Library. The library's second annual Science and Art Fair for Families will be presented on Saturday, January 28th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Exhibits and activities for children of preschool age and older will be provided by a number of organizations, including the DuPage Children's Museum and SciTech Hands-On Museum. Registration is not required for the fair. However, Water Street Studios will be offering a bird sketching class for students ages 7 to 14, which does require registration on the day of the fair. For more information, please call the Youth Services Desk. Chicago True Stories, the library's next Sundays on Stage program, will be presented at 2 p.m. on January 29th. Actress Martina Matheson will portray Flora, a flapper from the 1920s, who will share sizzling stories about that delirious decade. Please register online or by calling the reference desk. Sundays on Stage is sponsored by the Batavia Public Library Foundation. 
If you enjoy fresh baked bread, you'll enjoy the library's next How To Community program on Monday, February 6th at 7 p.m. Please join us for Yeast Breads when Chef Charisse will guide us through the 12 steps of yeast bread production and offer tips and tricks for bread baking. Chef Charisse will provide recipes, instructions, and samples. Please register online or by calling the reference desk. Winter Library Club for Families and Winter Reading Club for High School Students and Adults continues through February 28th. You still have time to participate, so come to the library and get started. Did you know that the library is a collection site for Chip in Batavia's fourth annual prom dress giveaway? If you have a prom dress you'd like to donate, please bring it to the library by February 16th. The prom dress giveaway will be held here at the library on February 18th. Chip Inn is also accepting prom-related accessories such as purses and jewelry. I'm Michelle Martzell and I hope to see you at the library. On Wednesday, January 25th, President Trump signed an executive order on the U.S.-Mexico border wall. The executive order will designate already appropriated federal funding to the wall, but the Times noted that it was unclear from where that money would come. According to CNN Money, the wall Trump desires could cost about $10 billion, an astounding $7.4 million per mile. However, other estimates suggest the cost could grow up to $15 billion or even twenty-five, dollars according to a report by Bernstein Research, which takes into account material costs as well. None of these estimates include the expense of the land that would have to be acquired to build on, which could also be a considerable number. CNN Money also reported that it will take approximately two years for the land to be acquired and the structure to be built, but would maybe generate hundreds of jobs, maybe a couple thousand if the project was sped up. However, it wouldn't create tens of thousands, as previously claimed, making only a slight impact on the general overall workforce. Trump vowed that he would get Mexico to pay for the wall, but Mexican officials have denied such claim. President Trump was scheduled to meet with Mexico's president Enrique Peña Nieto next week. However, Nieto canceled the meeting as of Thursday due to the situation with the wall. Here is the BPS board brief from AGS. Hi, I'm Leanne Rodriguez, a speech pathologist at the BPS 101's Early Childhood Center. On behalf of the Batavia Special Education Parent Network, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the organization and the important upcoming events. The Batavia Special Education Parent Network, which is known as BSPN, is a support network for parents of special education students. The network is made up of parents, special education teachers, school therapists, and administrators within the Batavia Public School District 101. Rudy, who is a parent in the district and has a child with special needs, is here with me also, since she is the parent co-chair of this growing support network. Any parent with a child who has special needs can benefit from the exchange of ideas and information that BSPN provides through our social networking at various recreational activities, informal coffee chats, and educational events, which all can be found on the organization's website, bspn-batavia.org. Hi, I'm Rudy Gandhi, the parent chair of the Batavia Special Education Parent Network. I'm really excited to be part of this growing support organization for parents, and I wanted to tell you about a couple of great events we have coming up. On Saturday, February 11th at 9 a.m., a Lights Up Sound Down film will be showing at the Goodrich Randall 15 Theater for sensory sensitive viewers. During the featured film, which is the Lego Batman movie, lights will be turned up, sound will be turned down, and no previews will be shown. Regular matinee prices of $7.50 for adults or $6 for children ages 3 to 11 will apply. All families are welcome to attend this special event. BSPN is also sponsoring its fourth annual Parent Resource Fair on Tuesday, February 28th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Batavia High School. At the fair, parents will learn about community resources for students from spe with special needs from early childhood through age 22. Resources include recreational opportunities, therapy providers, educational consultants, transition planning, advocacy, and support. Admission is free, and parents from neighboring communities are welcome. If you have a child with special needs or know someone who does, please visit BSPN's website to see all of the wonderful networking opportunities and educational events available. 
Thanks, and hope to see you at a BSPN event soon. Believe it or not, prom is less than three months away. So for the fourth year in a row, Chip and Batavia will be collecting and giving away gently used prom dresses to area students. This year, Chip and Batavia has partnered with the Batavia Public Library to host their prom dress giveaway. This year, the event is open to all girls regardless of their need and will include over 200 dresses, all of which will be free. The event is taking place on Saturday, February 18th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the library. If you or anyone you know has a gently used prom dress to donate to the giveaway, you can drop it at the library during any normal business hours between January 9th and February 16th. Batavia High School will be hosting this year's prom at Bobax Signature Events in Woodridge on Saturday, May 6th. A list of analyzed academic and student life data from the U.S. Department of Education was recently released on Niche.com, where it compiled this list of 2017's best school districts throughout the country and in each individual state. The rankings are calculated by an analysis from test scores, college data, and ratings from millions of Niche users. Some of the top neighboring school districts in Illinois that were ranked are Geneva Community School District 304, ranking at number 12, St. Charles Community School District 303, ranking at number 14, and Bat Batavia Public School District 101 ranking at number 24. If you are interested in a full list of 2017's best school district rankings, visit k12.niche.com. That's all we have for today, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of It's News to Me. Also, a big thanks to my co-host, Mariah, because today is her last show with us. Most of our programming is viewable online at mybatv.com or on YouTube under the username BATV1017. Be sure to like us on Facebook to stay up to date on the station's current happenings. Thanks again for watching. I'm Anastasia Gilardi. And I'm Ryan Molina. And, and that's, that's news, news to me. me. Hey, that's news to me.